Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So this is going to be about Faza, Prince uh, Faza. Um, everyone is uh, in love with this guy. The um, statesmanship, the uh, poetry, the elegance, and um, the musicality even of this this uh, amazing prince. Uh, I can imagine when he eventually ascends to um, replace his father, that will be an event. So, uh, Prince Faza, let's see uh, what the cards can tell us about him in general. This is always a popular subject uh, when I put it up. So, uh, but uh, as a matter of fact, I think a lot of marketing has gone into who this prince is. Uh, and it's not to say that it's not uh, deserved, that this reputation is not, that it's not deserved. I'm sure it is, I hope it is. So, uh, Prince Faza, but everything seems to be going the way you would, ex like a dream existence. The perfect, you know, no scandal, really. Um, so is it is it all true? Is or is his life as blessed and perfect as it looks uh, to us now? So uh, that's uh, we'll just dig into his life. But before we do any of that, well, let's make the cards work a little better for us. Yep, let's have just a moment of meditation. So Prince Faza, yeah, there was some uh, speculation as to uh, the children of the prince and um, and how many wives he has, but I mean, a lot of the very most personal parts of that, as far as anything official, don't really come through. But what does come through is so touching that we feel like uh, you know him personally. The the poems, uh, the music, um, the charities. Um, the, the elegance uh, and the majesty uh, with the um, animals. So, is there a lot about Prince Faza that we really don't know that's not so dreamy? Three cards, just to get started. Is there, is there a lot that we don't know that's not particularly uh, happy and nice? Three cards. Hey, first card. Uh, oh yeah, wow. So immediately we get the tower card. You know, the tower is, a, a, you know, a, a stricken tower. Look at the people falling out of the tower. Um, it's just a disaster, but it's the end. It's something that it's, it's this is a definite end to something. Um, so something better can happen, but yeah, there's, there's a disappointment there. Um, so is there more behind, um, scenes than what we see justice interesting so the justice card is very good because this, this sort of tells us don't worry about it um you know things will be evened out but the last card for that is the universe and so yeah this man uh, has um this is the end of a cycle uh, this is very perfect as a matter of fact because this is a perfect almost what you could say is a perfect reading for someone there's the the beginning of his true happiness will be a disaster. That's sad to say. But if you're a prince in waiting, um, yeah, something has to end completely before the uh, justice sets in and uh, everything evens out. And this, and then we have a whole new beginning of something magical and promising in the future. So this is what is troubling him. When I ask if there's something behind the scenes that makes his life not so perfect, yeah, it's this. The fact that this has to happen for this to happen. Interesting. So that just makes me think, yeah, he is as an amazing a young person as we see him as. But how old is he really now? Is he 40 yet? So, well, let's just do it again. Let's ask again about his true loves. Does he have his true loves 
in his life. And I leave that as plural because this is someone to whom that uh, sort of um, privilege, it seems to us, is available, but uh, are his true loves in his, in his life in a meaningful way right now. So three cards. Okay. One, two, three. Are his true loves in his life in a meaningful way right now? First card, High Priestess, female um, embodiment of uh, love and caring and yeah, yeah. She or they are in his life right now. Justice, interesting, has worked its way into this. And the Wheel of Fortune, it was just a matter of good luck because it could have been something very different. Wow, love when the cards repeat because it tells me, you know, the deck knows I'm going to read that card a certain way and it, make, and it says, okay, well, we can use, so, uh, make this a useful uh, interpretation. So, yeah, the, the, the fem feminine energy that he uh, craves and needs and wants, the, the specifically the ones he wants, are in his life right now because of some sort of a karmic justice that happens to work in his favor. And uh, it was just a good fortune that it worked out that way. So, let's see about uh, the charities, perhaps. charities that he's involved with are those really things that are true to his heart is that just political uh, showmanship the charities do they really touch him uh, is that you know is there is he pure to wanting to help those charities one two three cards three cards the charities his intention first one is a queen of, oh yeah this is cups are emotion and compassion and so he comes to those charities with a queen's worth of emotion because why because he's not a king okay someone's occupying the king position and the next one down is going to be the queen so yeah he's coming to those charities with as much compassion as he can carry as a matter of fact okay the charities the hierophant yeah the hierophant is what the charities are a structure of a, of a government of a kind in them, in, on their own. But uh, this is telling us that, yeah, uh, bringing the government into that picture, um, it's going to have to go this way because that is the way they came, is, uh, oh, that makes it of central importance. And then um, the Six of Pentacles. I forgot. And of course, Pentacles are value, can even be money. And... Um, the Six of Pentacles, I've got to take a peek because I don't want to say the wrong thing. Six of Pentacles, giving yourself, oh yeah, that's the fellow who's making, so this is distributing, oh well, it's perfectly perfect for this reading because this is distributing uh, the wealth in, a, in an equal and fair uh, way. And we see this man uh, comes to us. Um, this one, as some for some reason, is carrying a uh, musical instrument and looks like a songbook but um and he's kind of dressed in a tattered way so he's coming to us from a very pure place but this is distributing the wealth so yeah and that's perfect for a reading about charities wow that's kind of spooky it comes out like that so now we'll just do six cards on faza's uh, life whatever the cards can tell us six cards about prince faza his life i would say his name but i think i'll get it wrong i don't want to do that and so we use the name that he's chosen himself to be known by, at least for his poetry anyway. So six cards about Prince Vaza's life. One, two, three. And remember, I'm going to talk more about this deck at the end of the video. So you find out uh, all the details about it. Five, and see uh, most of uh, quite a few of the cards, which is um, what I always wanted to see when I was just being a viewer. So uh, what can the cards tell us about Prince Faza's life. First card. Strength. <laughs> well, it's going to require strength. That's that's nice. A good good card to get as a signifier for this reading about his life. And then the um, ah the, the challenge to the strength is things moving at a rapid pace. So yeah. Oh my goodness. I wonder if his father, what kind of help he's in. The basis of this reading is the King of Pentacles. It is. That's the base of the whole thing. The King of Pentacles. Right now the King of Pentacles is his father, but he will be the King of Pentacles. And that's the base of the whole thing. Perfect. 
<laughs> really, uh, the past of this reading for his life is this Eight of Cups having to leave something of emotional importance behind. And um, so, yeah, that's what he's looking at. He may not realize that even in his privileged and, and, and watched life, um, how much freedom he has, um, but that will be in his past. And in the sky of this is the Six of Pentacles. Oh yeah, again, the, his aim is to distribute the wealth, is to make things fair for everyone. Wow, it's beautiful. And then the likely outcome of his life uh, right now, ah, Hermit card. It ends up being very introspective, very on your own. Um, sometimes the Hermit is depicted in these cards as a poor, um, you know, beaten down old man. But in this deck, it's it's the perfect deck for this, the World of Terror, because it depicts the Hermit as this very, you could imagine this fellow is revered uh, and respected and, um, and, and satisfied with his life. So, I think it's a great reading. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So, this is the Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. Another great box. Nice magnetic clasp. Good, sturdy. This feels like really fine stationery would come in this box. So, it's that kind of quality. And uh, it's this beautiful color around. It's got a nice little introduction on the back that talks about the tarot and, and why it's depicted the way it is. And uh, this artist's questions for the cards. There are actually 82 cards here. So, this Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. This is a deck uh, that will instruct you how to determine your tarot blueprint and your personal birth card and annual card, shadow cards and karmic cards. And there are actually 82 cards in here instead of 78 and I'll, um, I'll show you you know how you can use them and I'll explain why why that is even so we'll start with the booklet and um, it's a nice uh, large uh, beautifully sepia toned uh, kind of a booklet with all the pictures of the cards in there which is always really really helpful in here there are uh, the author tells you a little bit about her and her family and her personal inspirations for coming to this deck, which are indeed very personal. And uh, so, a um, what happened here? It seemed like a friend um, in the guidebook. Uh, the, her, her she was encouraged by uh, a fellow seer, um, and I don't think she was a seer at the time. And an, an intuitive friend suggested that she could communicate with the, her relatives for the past, and she says she did that to interpret the images and the pictures of the faces of the loved ones represented in the deck. So tons of personal intention uh, went into the creation of cards, which I love. And even a dear friend of hers uh, named the deck. So, but the the deal with inside here is that there's two sets of cards, and I'll show you how that works. It's got a nice little pull here to help you get the cards out, but it comes with some extra cards in the pack, which I've tucked away under the ribbon, and I'll show you what that's about. Okay, in just a minute. So, they're, not, they're kind of actually a finish weight of card, but they've got a nice glossy finish, and they've got a beautiful gold uh, guild on the edges, and uh, the pictures are nice, and they're kind of showcased in a picture frame kind of thing, and uh, lots of rich color, and it tells you under each of the cards how to use them, and then if you're going to use them, as she suggests, for uh, tarot, personal tarot cards or birth cards, it's got even numbers here, and tells you how to use these numbers um, for that, uh, which is very interesting, but I really think you need the guidebook to kind of get through that. So what's going on here with the extra cards? So for uh, the Lover's card, which is um, the number six of the Major Arcana, it gives you three choices. I've got two of the choices here, and there's one choice that I've picked here, and it's in this deck somewhere. <laughs> but uh, so this choice right here is two, um, two men. This choice right here is two women. And then the choice that I chose to leave in this deck is a man and a woman. And just because that's what I'm, I see is more true to kind of all the tarot cards. But I would choose these uh, interchangeably if, if uh, you know, it seemed like that was the right thing to do for that read at the time. So, so that's uh, two extra cards that you need there for the lover's card, the number six. Then, for justice and strength, they've been numbered hyster historically uh, in each other's place uh, with various uh, tarot cards before a certain period and after a certain period. Uh, so number, and here you have three choices for justice and three choices for strength with just three extra cards period for the, the deck. I've got two of the choices here, Justice and Strength, and uh, uh, two of the choices uh, inside the deck. So it's four cards, actually. So, and what happens is, in some tarot decks, historically, Justice has been numbered as number eight. But in some tarot decks, it's been numbered as number 11. So, 
it gives you that choice. You can either number them in the, the one full suit of, of the Major Arcana as Justice is number 8 and Strength is number 11, or vice versa, which is what I've chosen to do, you can have them labeled as Strength number 8 and Justice number 11. So that, and that way you end up with four extra cards uh, completely uh, in this situation. So that was kind of a long explanation. But it's always good to lay them out here no matter how you do. And you know, you can just leave all the cards in the deck and just divine whatever comes up at the time, I suppose. You know, what's wrong with that? As long as you understand what you're looking at and, and if you get two justices in a draw, uh, be willing to, you know, etc. Or three lovers in one draw, be willing to decide how you're going to deal with that uh, as a rule of thumb before you start your readings, I would think is a useful thing to do. Maybe you can just do it off the cuff. But these are, like I said, the relative tarot. Pretty cool. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So, ciao for now.